Welcome back everybody. This is uh, Stone for Bread. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're not going to be dealing with weapons. We're going to be dealing with food for the people who are survival and preparing this country. Uh, this is a smaller picture of our little um, pot garden we got here. We got us some tomatoes as you can see. Also we got here a fig tree. My wife is uh, growing. What's this we have here? It's spinach. Uh, yeah. That's spinach. All right. Yeah, and we got strawberries, which Tyreek been eating. Some fresh lettuce, mustard dimes. My all-time favorite, lemon balm, which is a good. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say about lemon balm. It's um, you can take, you can eat the leaves straight, or you can put them in a the tea. But they're like, uh, they help, uh, they're not a stimulant, they uh, they kick you down, they make you sleepy. You have to be careful about eating them because they, uh, they kind of relax you. That's one of my favorites. Uh, we actually bought those from uh, Lowe's, but I get them every year because just that effect that it gives you. Uh, they're good eating for uh, relaxation and uh, anti-inflammatory properties too they have. We're going to look at a, also a couple of a couple of uh, edible plants that are edible wild weeds or whatever you want to call them that are in your yard right here down near the bush you see viola you see a lot of these in the in the yard uh, early in the spring they have like a little purple flower that goes with them but these are edible very nutritious they have a good flavor to them you see we have a whole lot of them in the yard here be one more close up that's a big one like with most uh, edible wild weeds you want to uh, you want to make sure you know the younger ones are always going to be better the older ones are a little tough I cut the yard this morning so some of the uh, leaves were destroyed here we have plantain major for those of you who you probably used to seeing these they have a uh, the little stalks that come up with the little like uh, corn heads on them but this one of course has been cut but this is edible uh, you taste more has more chlorophyll type taste you can cook them which is a lot better you can also take these and chew them um, if you like had an injury or insect bite or sting you can uh, put one in one of the leaves in your mouth chew it a little bit mix it with saliva and then put it on your wound to treat the itching and uh, to help uh, heal your wound now we also gonna go over to what else? What else? You have anything else out here, Tariq, that we can show them right in the front? Uh, clover. Clover, of course. Like I said, oh, sorry about it. make the picture kind of fuzzy. These are your typical clovers. Uh, the red ones we got a few left from me cutting the grass this morning. But you, everyone is familiar with these. A little three leaf cloves and four leaf cloves. The leaves are edible. The green leaves here. They're edible. And also the flower is edible. I put those in my salads a lot. Make sure when you uh, pick wild weeds out of your yard, always do two things. Do a sample test. Uh, just eat a small portion to uh, make sure that uh, you don't have any allergies. Just like though a lot of uh, uh, weeds are edible. Uh, you never know if you have an uh, allergy to them, so sample them lightly, take a small sample, put it on the tip of your tongue, chew a little bit, wait, see if you get a reaction, and if not, then, you know, it's probably pretty, pretty much safe, but still you want to kind of wait a little while. Uh, they say in the Army Survival, ma survival Manual, they say wait eight hours, but I never really waited that long, not saying, telling you not to do that, but... Um, You'll generally, most of the time, when things, if you have an allergy to something, you, within a few minutes of uh, biting it or putting it in your mouth, you'll know. Uh, you'll have some swelling and uh, some inflammation. Here goes some, here's some more clovers. Now, you can also put these in, um, steep these in some water and make a, a tea with them. Um, they say, I haven't tasted the red, the red ones, but they say the red ones have more flavor. So, get a chance to try those out. Oh, what we have here is some stinging nettle. Stinging nettle is very nutritious. 
what you want to do with the stinging nettle it has these little stingers on them I don't know if you can see them let me see if I can focus in on them yeah it won't let me do it they have little needles on them under the leaves and uh, on There's the stalk and what you want to do with that you want to um, heat them up get some gloves and pick them up um, you want to take them up with some gloves so they don't stick your hand because they'll inject several little chemicals into you and it'll uh, itch and irritate you so it's not lethal for most for the most part but it will irritate your skin that stinging nettle we also have one of my other favorites here that looks like four leaf clovers but this you see the little heart shape Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit my mosquitoes out here trying to get me I don't know if you can see the little heart shaped flowers like this these are wood sorrel and they're very good to eat let me see if I can put it in focus for you come on focus for me there we go these uh, have a lemony flavor you'll find them a lot in the yard they also have a, a kind of like a weather weather indicator uh, when it's raining uh, or about to rain they'll droop their leaves down um, to signify I guess high humidity uh, in the air so those are another uh, type of edible plants and one thing about wood sorrel my friend here you don't want to eat too many of them because they contain oxalic acid and sometimes they can interfere with digestion you can eat them in survival mode but you just don't want to you know crunch on them every day all day now we also have our backyard is a little bit of a mess because as you can see here we have bamboo shoots and the kids went crazy. I was telling them to cut the tall ones down. They were getting up to like four and five feet. If you look in the backyard here, you can see them all over the backyard, popping up here and there, like little uh, punji sticks, little spikes. We had one other day that was like five feet tall. It's taller than Tariq. We're gonna be digging some of those up. One thing that's interesting about them, when you cut them, they're filled with water kids just butchered them. I didn't tell them to do that. They kind of took leave of their senses and uh, butchered them the other day. But uh, we're going to find some. I've never eaten bamboo before, but we're going to prep some. Here's a shoot protruding from the ground. It's not that big, but it's big enough. Hey, I actually see some moisture on it too. But we're going to get a couple of those. Now, when they're at that point out of the ground there, too, um, you really don't want to get them at that height. You want to get them just as they break the ground. We got a lot of them all over the place. And as you can see, the bamboo here, try to keep the camera steady. I know I've been shaking it a lot. It's going to be part one. I'll do a part two of us actually harvesting the bamboo and preparing it for food. Uh, I know they give you a 10 minute limit. So let's try to find some, y'all. Oh, let me see if we got some fiddleheads up here. Well, I already saw that, Des. Thank you. I already saw it. Thank you. Oh, we have a uh, dandelion here. Dandelion. Oh, come on, camera. That's dandelion. Now you can eat this here. The leaves, uh, I put those in salads. You can cook them also, but they taste good in salads. Uh, the milk, you ever broke the stems here? The milk on them you can use to treat wounds, that little white sap that comes out of them. Uh, they're an excellent, uh, excellent food source. Uh, you also have cat ear, which is similar to dandelion, but it has the uh, yellow head on it. We had up here some fiddle heads, but they've all uncurled. And the ferns, the ferns before they unroll, Uncurl like here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, come on, camera, come into focus. There we go. A little bit. Before they un unfurl, you can uh, eat the fiddleheads. I don't know what the taste is like. It's not something that's really recommended all the time, but you can eat them, so it's good to know that. Uh, once when they're curled, but once they un unfurl, you don't want to uh, you don't want to eat them because the chemistry changes and then they become poisonous but here's another bamboo shoot in our yard and that's going to be about it for now just showing you some plants and then we'll get into 
getting some more. I mean, harvesting them.